SciSense Blocks lets you create dynamic, rich widgets that turn your dashboard into an interactive business app. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how SciSense Blocks works and how to build interactive dashboards, which includes banners, columns, sparklines, action buttons, iframes, carousel, forms, and conditionals. All of these interactive widgets were made by SciSense Blocks. So how does it work? After installing Blocks, the first step is to create a new widget or edit an existing widget and choose the widget type Blocks. This transforms the widget editor into the blocks design panel, which you see here. Here we can see the visual area that displays what our widget is going to look like. On the right side, we have templates, which are predefined templates by SciSense. Here you can create new templates and choose to save them or choose the template closest to your use case and then modify it. Below the templates, we have the editor where you define the content of your widgets. As you start coding, the widget is updated in the visual area on the left. Next we have the Configuration tab. This is where you define the look and feel of your widgets. You can think of this as the CSS part of your widget. Next we have Snippets. These are predefined code snippets for implementing different parts of blocks. For example, if you're building a widget from scratch, start off with the main blocks snippet. Lastly we have the Actions tab, where you can insert predefined actions into your widgets, or create your own custom widgets. Now let's take a look at what makes up a blocks widget. The easiest way to learn how Blocks widgets work is through the snippets, so let's open the Snippets tab. We can begin with the Blocks main snippet. In this snippet we have an empty shell of a widget. At the top we have some objects for adding CSS and JavaScript. Then we have a title for the widget. Next, Show Carousel, which we discuss in a later video. The most important object is the body. The body object is just like you would expect in a standard HTML page. The body of the widget is made up of building blocks known as elements. Elements can be composed in nearly infinite arrangements to create many types of blocks. Lastly, we have the actions object for making the widget interactive. We also discuss this in a later video. Now within the body block we have containers. Containers work just like divs. They are empty and used for arranging child elements within the widget. While you don't have to use containers, they make arranging your elements a lot easier. All elements stack vertically and expand to the width of their parent. So keep this in mind when you're creating widgets. If you want to stack the elements together on the same row vertically, you can use the column sets or columns. Column sets hold a collection of columns. Each column in a set is placed next to the other columns. Taking a look at the Trending Headphones widget, we have a container that contains a text block with its title. Next we have a container that contains a column set. The column set contains a set of columns, each with an image vertically placed side by side. The images and their titles appear as separate vertical columns, however these are actually columns within several column sets. So on the top, we have the title row. Then we have our first column set, which is stacked beneath the title row. Below the images we have a second column set, with the labels in each column. Now this covers the basics of Blocks widgets. Sison supports a lot of different child elements to let you create truly interactive dashboards. The important thing to remember is that each widget should include at least a body and a container. From there, you can start to add column sets, images, and more. For more information, see our online documentation.